Hello, everybody, and welcome back for another breakdown. This one today brought to you by YouTube commenter, this person. See what I did there? Incorporate the communication that we have in the comments with the videos. So somebody said, take a look at this. I said, that's a good ad. Let's do it. And we're going to break down a few different things in here. This was supposedly shot by Hoyt. Now, uh, I didn't do any research whether or not that was true, but this looks really nice. And Hoyt is good, which would mean it all makes sense, but do your own research. So let's just scroll through it here. It's a person on a train. Bump. Hello. How are you? Good. <gasps> did you just steal from me? No. No, you wouldn't have. I think she did. I did. Oh, we're in a hall. Now we're thinking about it. Let's go back. Let's run faster. Oh, we got on the train. We made it on the train. We see the soft hop method there. Again, a soft hop. Like the train is prime time for the soft hop method, right? Andre gave us a beautiful thing when he introduced us all to the famous soft hop method. And the train is really the spot to do it. And trains are tricky. I spent, we spent five days uh, on the feature that I did two years ago now. Uh, we spent five days on a train and it was the exact opposite of fun. Not fun, so I can't imagine Hoyt was having much fun with this, although the lighting looks nice. He probably had the toys to have some fun. Here we go, a lady on the train. We got jumping. We're going to run back. Da -de -da. We're running all over the place. VFX. Everything looks nice. And ta-da, now we're making out. Get some clothes. And life is beautiful. Okay, so that's what we're going to be looking at today. Now, I'm not going to go over too much of this. I'm just going to focus on, because a lot of the times people will say, Patrick, you harp on about uh, the framework and upstage lighting and controlling the different zones and backlight and blah, 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 all the other things that we always talk about on the podcast or in these videos. And yes, it's true, but you don't always have to follow the framework. Not everyone does. Sometimes you'll be in locations or situations where you just cannot light from upstage. Now, that's not to say that lighting from upstage is bad or that you always have to do it. Sometimes you just can't. So you got to make uh, downstage lighting look good. Now, why wouldn't you want to do downstage lighting all the time? Because it's harder. <laughs> Getting a nice looking image with downstage lighting is harder. Go out and do a test for yourself uh, and see. It's harder. It doesn't look as nice right out of the gate. Now, if you are someone like Hoyt who has enough skill and enough experience to be able to make anything look good, well, then you have the option to do that, to go out and do that, and to make it look halfway decent. But for everybody else, it's just easier. It's like, why would you do something the hard way when you could do it the easy way? So the easy way is upstage lighting. It just looks better. It creates more depth, which uh, creates a better looking image, something more compelling. And you normally, if you're a cinematographer, in the commercial world, you get paid for compelling. Okay, so what we're going to look at here is this first one. Let's go back to full screen. So what do we got here? We got gentlemen bumps in and... Ta-da! Let's pause on this one. Okay, because this will be our reference frame versus the other frame that we're going to look at, which is pretty much exactly this distance from this gentleman, uh, just a different setup. Okay, so what's going on here? This is not your traditional um, framework style setup, but it still looks really nice. What are the things that make it look nice? Big, soft light. That looks nice. Nice shadow. Contrast in the background. You got big blob of almost blown out, but not blown out. And then you got the silhouettes in the background. Uh, you don't, you're not really creating depth here throughout this whole commercial. I don't know what this was shot on. There's, it's so wide open that sometimes in a shot like this, where you're so close to somebody, it eliminates the depth because everything is so shallow in the background, right? So it just starts to feel very flat. So then you have to make sure that you create depth in the action area of the scene, or else it's going to feel even flatter, right? So you got to create even more depth. If you're going to go with the shallow depth of field look, you want to concentrate even more on what's happening in the area of focus to really create that contrast because you can't rely on the depth in the background to do that, especially when you're in a location like this where it's so far away. When you have this little tiny bit of darkness and you've got the people passing by and the atmosphere that is moving during the shot, but you got to be careful. So this is not framework. I mean, there are still elements of it. This could almost be, I mean, this is framework if he looks this way, right? You can feel the little fake edge light that is happening here, this little hard light. We're still going harder on the background, wrapping around. It doesn't make it around to the other cheek. And you can see it's it's a fairly hard-ish light. Now, hers is going to be slightly different. 
We come around to her. Where's her close up? Okay, same thing, right? No, not a whole lot of depth because the angle that this light is taking, right, creates this little flatness here. But again, we've got moving atmosphere back there. We got people moving in the background. It's fairly quick. Now you can't light from this way because we got the train over there, right? That's just the way that the location works. The scout, they go through the whole process. They work backwards from the wide. By the time you get to these shots, you realize, well, if we've got to get this shot of the station, where is it? The running one. If we've got to get this one. Well, why would we bring the light this way over the train and the close-ups? It doesn't make any sense. So we're going to have to light it this way. So as long as you know that going into it, well, then you have a reason to do it. It's just harder to do. Now, if we take those frames, those two frames that we just saw, and we contrast that versus this, you tell me what you like better. Which frame do you like better? Now, if you answered this one, uh, I can't help you. No one can help you. It is not as nice. <laughs> it just doesn't look as good, right? You've got nice soft shadow leaking over to the other side, upstage key. There's a little bit of something back here, but that's just at, that's probably just atmosphere. It's not like there's a light back there pushing back here. There might be, but it's very, very subtle. Uh, again, with the super shallow depth of field, you see what I'm talking about? It just falls to nothingness. But here, this is just a classic example of, well, do we go upstage or do we go downstage? Upstage, it just creates more depth. That's all that it does. You don't have to do it all the time. It just makes your job easier. And if there's so many things to think about when you're on set or when you're getting ready for a project, why not uh, eliminate things that take up headspace where you're actually going to come out with a worse outcome or something that's just as good but takes more work and uh, takes more mental energy to think about, okay, how are we going to do this? We can't really bounce the light outside if we're lighting from the front. That means we have to soften it off. It just creates a whole different way of thinking about the images if you're going to do that. So here, this is your classic upstage. And the reason this shot works is whoop, we go back here, right? If you can light this one, right? Say this is on the boards. Say you're gonna get this job, you get the brief. Okay, you're talking with the director. Yes, we need this close up of him realizing that she has stolen his wallet. Has to be. And he has to do it in this train station. It's the most epic area. Well, let's go in for the close up when he really realizes that. Okay, what's gonna make the close up look the best? Well, if we stand here and we light from upstage uh, in this specific spot, we're gonna shoot into the shadow. Uh, this is gonna look really beautiful. Right? That's the, that's the look that we want. If you can light this bit, then you just take those same principles and you go back to here. Now that dictates what you're going to do in the wide. Because then in the wide you say, well, what can't we control here? We know we want to be on the shadow side, so what action does that mean? He has to be standing in this orientation, looking that way, so that when we go in, we can get that close up. He needs to be away from the wall, so we get that depth. We need to bring in uh, pretty much every light in the entire country to be able to rain down this amount of light during the day, All right? So just huge amounts of light, but the, the fixture doesn't matter. The uh, type of light doesn't matter because you're going to farm that out to the team, right? You're going to say, hey, team, this is the look that we want. Go and get it done. But you have to talk with the director. You have to talk with the production designer. You got to talk with all of these people on the tech scout and say, well, okay, we know that we want the close up to look like this. So for the wide, that means we have to be in this corner of the room, right? We can't be in that corner of the room. And everybody that listens to the podcast or has followed the channel for any amount of time knows that the, the, the framework, if you're interior, you want to be shooting into the L of the room, right? This is the L of the room where you get that little corner. Uh, you want to create as much depth as you can back here with the little openings, get this person away from the wall. You know, you don't want them back here. You want them standing out here. And when you shoot into the L of the room, more than likely, you're going to be lighting through the windows that are on that side of the room, which then immediately puts you on the shadow side. And if you light from the windows out here and you're standing with your camera on this side, you can be anywhere along here and make this thing look good, right? As soon as you set up these lights, the job is done. Like when you want to come in for the close up, you don't have to change anything in this entire building. All you have to do is come in here, uh, bring in the neg, bring in a four by piece of diffusion and you're done, right? You want a little bit more wrap. Maybe you can put a poly, you know, just left of camera. You got diffusing the actual light, then wrapping around the light. So you hit this cheek, then negging over here. So this goes dark and then using the Atmos, right? And here, the only thing that you're really balancing to, like, because you're looking for speed and when you light from outside with the big lights, I'm not going to go over the whole thing, but you know, it's quicker. So in this situation, if you're looking for speed, you're like, well, I'm going to bring in the diffusion. If you bring in the diffusion, what's going to happen is this level is going to go super low. If you, the amount of light coming through here, if you cut it with a diffusion, 
if you go something super thick, it's going to, you're going to lose lots of level. So this background is going to get hotter and hotter and hotter. So really, you just have to balance the background. When you're in a space that big and you don't want to relight it, if you're happy to take the time to relight, then go for it. But if you're using this method, you're trying to save as much time as you can in between setups to really concentrate on the wides and then work your way down that way and, and be quick and efficient because people like that. Directors like it. Talent like it. Everybody likes uh, a quickly run set. You just have to balance to the background, okay? And if you're too, if you're losing too much level here on your diffusion, just pick something lighter. Pick something lighter and then use more wrap. So more poly above the camera to help wrap this around. Because if you go too light here and maybe the shadows are too harsh, you can just wrap a little bit more light around and then it softens off, right? Just feel those little um, edges just start to soften off and the transition between the two starts to soften off. Uh, let's see. So again, so if you can, if you know that one, this is where you start. You say, I know I can control this. This one's going to look good. We need the eyes and the reaction. We work backwards from there. Well, let's light from outside. Now, normally, I will... <laughs> This is me going against Hoyt here. This is cool because you got the rays, right? You got the rays coming into the shot uh, and you got this cool reflection on the ground, right? That's all great. A lot of the times though, you're gonna want a light from the window that you can't see because what's gonna happen to the windows when you light through them is all this. They just blow out to nothingness. And maybe uh, Hoyt's going for that because they didn't wanna see the modern skyline out there. Maybe this is all VFX anyway where they put diffusion straight on there so you couldn't see because then you would see that we've got old cars out there, but it's probably, you know, like a McDonald's out there or something that they want to get rid of. So you can, you can light straight through there. But uh, normally you would want to light through the windows that you can't see. So then you could expose for this properly, right? You could balance the two. If you are lighting with these same banks of 18Ks that you've got out here and you're coming this way, you know, you're still getting all the benefit of shooting into the shadow of upstage key, shooting into the L, all of those things. It's just you're not getting this blown out window up here and it's easier to control, meaning you need less level, less actual light level in here to balance with the background, right? That's what we're going for there. Okay, we go into the close up, the little running shots we're not gonna do. We will do, this is the soft fob method, everybody knows, right? This is like this, it's hard to see in this little transition, but we'll see it later on. This is hard on the body and then soft on the face, right? You got a little bit of edge light here. But this is, this is the method. And a train is a perfect spot for uh, the soft up method. So hard on the body, soft on the face. When in doubt, do that, you'll be okay. Uh, where is it again? Passing, passing. Here it comes again. Boom, there, there it is on her. We, if we frame through this thing. Okay, she stands up in that beautiful soft light. And then you see the hardness here, right? The hardness is not on her face hard on the body, soft, beautiful, rappy on the face. Now you too can shoot a perfume ad or any other ad where you want somebody to look halfway decent. Just don't make it hard on the face, All right? That should be my t-shirt. Sounds a little bit bad though, doesn't it? Uh, okay, let's keep going. The look back, the chase. And there was one more thing we wanted to look at here. What was it? We're going, we're going, we're going. Oh, here we go. So again, everybody always says, uh, you know, the framework, it's just a formula. It dumps down the artistic process. People like Hoyt, they, they've got their, you know, they're, they're artists. This is why they're at the top, right? Okay, maybe. Or maybe by the time we look at hundreds of these, once this channel uh, is done, uh, you'll be convinced. Easiest way to do, think about it is when a cinematographer has their choice. So you're shooting green screen. It's all VFX. How do they light the thing? And how do they incorporate that in with the visual effects? 10 times out of 10 on a visual effects shot, it's going to be upstage key. The only time people are doing non upstage keys are when they have to, right? Boom, there it is. Okay, so sun in shot. It's VFX, so you don't have to worry about the sky blowing out or balancing these levels. You just have to worry about this, but it's upstage key. He's looking this way of the camera. The sun is over here, giving us his little glow in the VFX world, and then in the real world, we're lighting from this way, and we're negging over here, right? Which makes no sense. This kind of contrast levels, it doesn't exist in the world. But this is what people expect when they want to see something nice. They want this level of contrast, right? So don't show them, uh, you know, daytime television stuff. Here we go. Where's the other one? That's nighttime. This one's even better, I think. Nighttime, this soft light just coming out of nowhere, right? Go big, go soft, 
create contrast at night. Why is there this level uh, in the middle of the sky? Nobody knows. Does it match the color of the sky? No. Does anyone care? Not really, right? Because there's so much production design in this. You could have gotten uh, cinematographers significantly worse. Half the job is the production design, is the visual effects. But then Hoyt is putting the final stamp on things, right? It's like the final say, yes, this looks good. No, this doesn't look good. Uh, is Do we have enough Atmos uh, train? And then here we go. Boom. Classic. This is framework. People looking out of windows it's the exact same thing as being inside of a car or any situation where you're going to be like this or shooting the dinner table scene that we always talk about. You want to be looking, shooting past the light, past the little section that you've pulled away. So from here, you want to be inside out, outside in doesn't look good or is significantly harder. So here, upstage key, nice, soft, light, little tiny edge, wrap around to darkness, salt and pepper in the background, shooting along the window, lighting from the window that you can't see. All right, because the big light is over here, and this is easy stuff here. When do there's one other thing I wanted to show you? Oh, this end bit. Can we get to the end bit? All right, so this is not. This is still just because it's not an upstage key. We're still using a lot of the same elements, though, right? We're creating depth in the frame, layering as much as we can. We got background over there, keeping things interesting. We still have a little bit of split here on the face, even though it's coming from upstage. Wearing white, never easy to do, but salt and pepper all across the frame. Keep the darkness, focus the eyes, use the shallow depth of field. And we come around to her. If you're going to go this way on the lighting, just make it as big and as soft. Look at the, sh the transition to shadow. All right. Then in the grade, you put the power window in. You drop all of these levels around her so the eyes immediately focus on the face. I mean, this is, uh, if you're going to go near side lighting, go soft. All right. Take it out, ta-da, and it's over. Again, framework, and look at the background there. This is your classic framework shot here. Keep the background interesting and shoot along those lines to create the depth. You want to see the background. You want to see the roof going this way, right through his eyeballs. She's not huge. She's not an ogre. Right? She's in the right spot. He's looking down. You see the little two little eye lights. Not too much neg here. Um, but you could go, right, if you wanted more crunch, if you were going to do some spy thriller or something, you wanted more crunch, you could, again, soften this off even more, bring this, this level down over here even more. But you got eye light shooting past the darkness of somebody's head. Again, the benefit of being on the shadow side. And you got yourself a nice little ad there. So not surprising that uh, this is a white shot ad. It looks great. Again, like I said, a lot of it goes into production design, VFX. All of those things make a big difference. But you're still the final person that has the taste that says, yes, this is good. No, it's not good. And uh, I think it shows, too, also in the visual effects side of things. If you have your choice, you're going to go upstage key. It just is easier. Uh, you don't believe me? Go out there. Try it for yourself. Okay. That's going to do it for this one. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.